absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, my question was, um, I've been hearing a lot of gurus out there saying about uh, there might be a tsunami of, uh, of, of foreclosures or uh, recession coming. And as a newbie, uh, how, how could I or the other people here get prepared for something like that? What, what strategies should we be concentrating on or is it all of the above or how, how should we get prepared? Have something like that. Um, yeah, the, the very simple. So uh, how should we prepare for a probable or possible recession? Right. Uh, I, I only know two things about prognostication uh, predictions uh, in real estate. Real estate goes up and it eventually goes down and then it goes back up again. I've through my lifetime, I've seen it happen several times. Nobody knows exactly when. We didn't know about the pandemic. We didn't know about 2008. We didn't know about 9-11. Nobody knows when or how it's going to happen. Okay. Um, uh, my, what, did, what, did my, do, my, what, what did they do in 2008 when that crashed? So what did most investors do? What did they concentrate on uh, when, when 2008 hit? Well, I, I basically, I, uh, when I bailed, I, uh, Claudia and I had a lot of properties, mostly in Southern California, a lot of properties that we were doing rent to owns with. And we sold the majority of our properties. We kept a few of the really good ones, but I was getting very scared. As you remember in 2007, Obama was elected pre uh, president, but he, yeah, and him and George Bush and the bankers were all having these meetings. Well, I was getting real nervous about the banking industry. They were refinancing anybody who could respirate. Sometimes they, people were refinancing their home four, five, six times. Sometimes they were giving them 120 or 30% of value. You remember they'd give them a new mortgage and then they'd give them a, a, a HELOC Lime, Lime of Equity credit card or debit card. Remember that? That made me very nervous because you can't just keep printing money forever. Right. And so what, what we did, I'm, I'm a pretty conservative investor. Uh, the properties I held, I made very good money on them already. And I think Billy Crystal said, it's not how much you make, it's how much you get to keep. Uh, so I, I got cautious and uh, we liquidated a lot of those properties. And so like, coming into uh, 2008, we were, I, I don't want to sound like I'm a, I have a crystal ball or anything. We were, we were pretty luck, uh, lucky or smart or a little of both there. Um, the simple answer to your question, however, is who cares? Okay, the, the, my attitude is good times or bad. Some people always make money. Um, I shared this with my, um, my group on Monday. This September, and I don't want to sound like a jerk, like a braggart, but this September was the best September we've had in 15 years. Okay, financially, I mean, making money. We chart this every year. How much did we do in October and November? This September, my word of honor, guys, um, it was the best. Now, th that to me is, what am I doing different today that I did 15 years ago when I made half as much money? Um, I'm a better salesperson. I'm a better marketer today. So no matter what, ba what bad stuff is going to happen, if you have the sales and marketing skills, somebody is going to need to buy a home. Somebody's going to need to sell a home. Nobody stopped eating in 2008. We didn't right. go out and have, maybe we didn't have as many filet mignon uh, dinners at Ruth Chris Steakhouse and we switched to mac and cheese. We didn't stop eating, did we? Or no. maybe not as many people were buying the, uh, what do they call them? McMansion, McMansion, McMansion. Victor? Yeah, okay. McMansion. But they, yeah, yeah, maybe they bought a smaller condo or a smaller house in a different area. So change is inevitable. God, I'm so long-winded today, I'm sorry. Uh, change is inevitable. The thing is, do you have the skill set, and are you able to adapt to this changing environment so that you can still make money? What a great sales, what a great uh, of entrepreneurs do when things change. They change with, this, they adapt to the changes. Okay, so marketing, marketing is, is a major player then. Would, marketing is always a major. Marketing Get yourself out there. And I heard you guys earlier talking about marketing, and I've always focused uh, the last couple of years. I focus intensely on virtual attraction through social media marketing. I rather have Google send me a check every month on all the videos I do, 
Okay, I just, I, I just right now, I just made uh, 15 new videos. They're all scheduled all through October going into November. People see those videos. I'm hoping they're going to call me, text me, or go to my webpage. Okay, so that I can attract quality. I still can make cold calls. Okay, I still get referrals and things like that. But that consistency word. So no matter what happens to the economy, nobody's going to start living on the street. They may, they just may slow down the buying on these big new houses. Right now, what I'm seeing, I'm in a little country town here in Colorado, a little ski town. There is no inventory here. The developers are as fast as they can build. Pardon my language, ladies. They're building shit shacks for a million dollars. And -hmm. people are waiting in line to buy them and move in. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And that has, I think that has to do with the culture shift we're going through. We're going through a culture shift right now. People are discovering that they can work from home. So why be in the city when they can be in, a, in the country or the suburbs? And we're seeing people with money and credit who can move now are doing it. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing a lot of people leaving uh, the major cities right now. There's a little bit of an exodus there. So there could be a blip in real estate in some of the major cities. But other cities like Phoenix are booming right now. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And everything. Philip, where do you live again? Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque. I love Albuquerque. New Mexico. Okay. Yeah. One of our states is missing, right? <laughs> Land of it. Land of enchantment. <laughs> well, I'm trapped. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I love New Mexico. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I made uh, in real estate was not investing in Rio, do- Rio Doso, New Mexico. Yeah, they're making five, their- five acre lots for $25,000. Do you know what they go for today? They're really expensive. Five acre lots for 25K, right near the ski area. They have a little ski area, they have casinos there. I, th- I think there's an Indian reservation with casinos there. They have a little airport there. It's a lovely little town, Disneyland type town. And I didn't invest in there. And I bet you those, those five acre lots are worth a million now. Oh, easy. Yeah. 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 So, Adapt, so ad- adapt be strong in your sales. Um, I read the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times every day. Somewhere in the middle, there's, there's some truth, you know. And, um, you can always make you can make money in an up or down market. Some great fortunes were made in down market or changing markets. Yeah. So it just be, depends on your your skill level. Then practice, practice, practice makes better. Uh, do what you got to do and do your marketing. Yeah, yeah and and be an and be, and be an optimist. You know. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people when things get bad. You know, and there's a lot of bad stuff right now. There's a lot of people hurting right now. I'm really sensitive to that that's right. why you know when I, I almost apologize when i have a good month in september i know that there's a lot of people really hurting out there right now i have friends who have little mom and pop restaurants and businesses and they're just and they got mortgages and kids in college and stuff and they're hurting bad right now right in, in stuff like that and they're adapting by the way they're doing home do i have one friend he, he said i'll never do home delivery guess what he's doing now <laughs> so he's adapting that's good He's adapting. He expanded his tables outside. Okay. He, you know, changed a lot of things around. This is the adaptation. You know, Darwin said uh, the strong will survive. Right. Because they, they can adapt to their environment. We're in a, we're in a pandemic uh, environment. We're at a very, uh, the politics is very nasty right now. We don't know where that's going to go into next year and everything. Don't get caught up in the negativity. Let, try to put some blinders on and see what's good or what you can take advantage of. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I just, I'm in the mindset of always being prepared for whatever uh, so I can be prepared and, and be able to be successful in that preparation. Watch your, watch your overhead. Have, a, have, some, have a little cushion of money right now. Well, the only one of the good things about this pandemic is we're not spending as much money on vacations or going out to dinner, right? That's so true, right? let's, let's maybe put away a little nest egg. Okay. Right. Cause if the recession and if a recession or something does come going into 2021, that means they will be buying opportunities to buy good properties in good neighborhoods for a lot less money. There you go. Well, thanks, Clyde. I appreciate that. I'm, I've got a big mouth here. I'm sorry, Victor. I took over this thing and I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're, you're good to go. Yeah. If, if you go back, Philip, at the beginning of, the, of, of today's um, 
um, show, I guess I'll call it. Um, I kind of missed talking it. About some of those those same things, and you find that the, the the market is always segmented, and there's a whole lot of money out there right now. And and don't get caught up in the numbers of unemployment and all that stuff because it's from a segment. It's from hospitality. It's from restaurants. It's from a lot of those areas, and they skew the numbers. But the people are out there are buying like crazy. There is no shortage of money. There is no shortage of the acquisition of knowledge also. Like right now we're in an environment where people are just seeking knowledge, understanding that they can work from home and they can do all kinds of stuff. So if you have a skill set that you can share, that's another segment of the population that is begging for it. So it, it, it's all segmented and there's always an opportunity in there for, for us. And like Claude said, there's, you know, you just make the adjustments, you pick